Hey, welcome everybody. I'm Mikhail Astralbus, technical solution representative in Samsung Electronics Baltics. And I'm really glad to see you here at the presentation uh, about Samsung solutions for enterprise mobility. And actually, I'm going to talk not only about Samsung solutions, but also about how we and how the analysts see the enterprise mobility, what is enterprise mobility, what opportunities it gives to companies, to organizations, what challenges are there, and then a uh, couple of solutions Samsung provides and can offer here in Estonia, here in the Baltic market, to our customers, by our partners, including Katia, to help you work in this changing environment. So, very short slides. Most of you heard of Samsung already. We are one of the largest, maybe, multinational companies. We have almost 300,000 employees. We are market leader in different categories like smartphones, TVs, memory cards, uh, large format displays. We are Olympic partner, but what is Samsung doing here right now? Samsung is talking about solutions for the business. And Samsung in the Baltics, we are established since 2008. We are the sales subsidiary for the three Baltic countries, headquartered in Riga, but have local offices in Tallinn and in Vilnius, uh, about 140 employees. Our revenue in 2012 was 357 million. Last year it was a bit more, but I don't know exactly it right now. So that's very shortly about Samsung. And actually, before I start with the serious part of my presentation, uh, mostly, I hope you have seen already that we have some exhibition there together with Cisco, also showing how Cisco solutions work with Samsung together. And uh, you can win a Galaxy S4 phone here. So the thing, well, what you need to be eligible to win the phone is to get four stickers, two from Samsung and uh, two from Cisco. I have stickers with me and I can give them to you after the presentation. And then you will get one Samsung sticker, one Cisco sticker if you come to our stand. And one Cisco sticker will be available for those who attend Cisco presentation here today in the afternoon. So I believe the Galaxy S4 is still a very good device. I'm using that, I'm really happy with it. And it supports majority of actually all of enterprise features that I will be talking about later on here. So, first of all, about the trends. What is enterprise mobility? Why is it important? And why people are talking about it? Uh, enterprise mobility is not that, well, two words, but it's also the trend, trend towards shift in work habits, how people can work today. Uh, how employees can work out of office without being tied to their working places. Surely enterprise mobility started from the, mm, the first notebooks. But now with more and more mobile devices available, we are having much more opportunities to design our processes differently and to work differently. And uh, the simplest way is here, yeah, I can upload also my corporate presentation to some mobile device. I can read my emails from the mobile device. Maybe I can access my internal systems from that mobile device when I'm at the customer's place or I'm working in home office. We have a customer in Lithuania who has just recently decided that, well, they have pretty simple uh, help desk for their customers. The help desk is using email and web application, that's all. 
So in principle, help desk employees receive instead of their notebooks and desktop computers some mobile devices and have moved to the home office. And that since the mobile devices support 3G and LTE, the home office is actually any location within Lithuania where they still can reach internet. So it may be home, it may be summer villa, it may be seaside resort. They just need to have access to the, uh, with their devices to these corporate systems. And we, when we are talking about the key requirements for that enterprise mobility, there are different buzzwords uh, right now on the market. So you can see we need to talk about security, we need uh, to talk about different ways to buy the devices for the employees, like bring your own device, this is one of the topics, uh, mobile device management, and I believe Citrix before this session has also uh, shown their solution for mobile device management. Uh, we might be talking about social media integration, so how we are using even Facebook for work purposes. Uh, Surely about analytics. We need to get the information how the employees are working, how they are using the devices. And also the maybe there will be another analytical information like customer behavior available. A uh, few words about analyst predictions uh, regarding the enterprise mobility market. So this is the European research. And uh, the idea is that enterprise mobility shipments, so ship, um, sales of mobile devices of different types to the companies, are expected to grow at least twice uh, from 2012, so that's almost two years ago, to 2015. We are somewhere here now. The prediction for the last year was actually exceeded. And uh, well, digging into the categories, well, the old feature phones, the phones with the buttons, uh, are dying. And we see that well, smartphones are growing in the companies, and also tablet use is growing very fast in the companies. And that's the fastest growing device category. And uh, then also last year, KAE Enterprises, KAE uh, has surveyed enterprises in Europe. Uh, to ask what are the most requested capabilities for the devices or for the mobile solutions for the companies. IT managers have been answering that. And surely mobile requirements or must have on, for any mobile solution, mobile devices, the email, access to calendar and contacts. On the, the, on the third position we have voice and text. So calling and sending SMSs is not as important for the companies as sending the emails. After that, we have well, the first security topic is VPN access for mobile device. And then we have file sharing, social media, business applications like CRM, and then we have navigation. Well, that's also an option. And then another question was what you would like to have. What is your wish list for the, for the mobile solutions? Answer number one was faster access to content. And I believe now with the LTE deployments in the Baltics, really fast access to the content is not a, shouldn't be a key problem. More stable access to the content, well, this is both networks and the solutions, uh, robust solutions are needed for that. And then we have workflow optimization in the integration of the devices and solutions into the whole company's process. And then again, we have improved data security. So with enterprise mobility, with the new categories of devices, we are opening a totally new world, <coughs> where mobile devices are essentially personal computers running new operating systems. At the moment, uh, Samsung flagship devices are having two gigabytes or three gigabytes of RAM. So I believe five years ago, that was the industry standard for really decent computer notebook to have two gigabytes of RAM. And eight core CPU inside the mobile devices now with Snapdragon, for example, or four core CPU, that has been a really 
decent CPU for uh, notebook, maybe three or four years ago. And even now, well, you are buying quad core CPUs for your notebooks. So actually, the mobile devices are just other type of the computer. And uh, then there is a growing, really growing expectation that with mobile devices, you should do everything you can do with your personal computer. You should be able to write the documents. You should be able to send the emails. You should be able to access your business applications. And uh, what we even hear from our customers either in the Baltic or something here in Europe or US is that the customers are not asking for the better devices. They are willing to do jobs better and to increase success of their business by using the devices and the solutions. And uh, then mobile devices are just one of the tools to improve the things, or they at least should be one of the things to improve, uh, one of the ways to improve for the business. But surely when we are opening something new, there are challenges, there might be threats. And uh, the first challenge is that everyone is rushing to the mobility. This is through the information from Tech Target Computer Weekly Study. Uh, IT priorities in Europe in 2014. IT managers across maybe 20 or 30 European countries from UK to Ukraine have been surveyed. Uh, and uh, what I have taken from that survey is uh, the broad initiatives and highest profile projects plan. So these are the, well, it's not exactly projects, it's projects categories planned by IT managers for this year. You see that, well, 51% of respondents mentioned server virtualization, but what is important that four of 14 initiatives are related to mobility. We have tablet PC related projects, smartphone projects, mobility, and mobile applications on the job, but it's still 33%. And that was really uh, surprising. Uh, another thing was that in the same survey that 25% of respondents told that they are already now doing uh, mobile device management, mobile security projects, mobile endpoint management. So they are already governing that mobile enterprise. And in principle, new class of devices that we have today means also shift in IT paradigms. Uh, one thing that matters, well, in, com in personal computing still, or in servers, we are measuring CPUs and RAM, the bus speed, maybe through disk speed, etc. In case of mobile devices, even IT management should also look at form device form factor. What is the right screen size? Do I need the pen to write on that? What is the line, uh, application layout, like landscape or portrait? Should I install the devices into the cars meaning I need also some robust holders, etc. So we really have a lot of new questions. Uh, and then another question for IT managers is finding or developing the right applications to do the work. And uh, this means that successful mobile project needs both technical and market-based approach or business-based approach to design a successful solution. Device plus some management capabilities plus software, and rolling that out. And maybe even choosing the right operator to provide you with data. And uh, another thing which is more and more important is testing and monitoring the performance of mobile applications. Most of IT people know that we need to test any application that is intended to run on the web or on our computers. So now, this is just another way of the computer. We need also to test and to check whether it's feasible to use in our scenarios. Another question, or well, the same question is what platform to choose for my mobility project. And uh, it's IDC research from last year. So it's uh, just sharing the market share of different operating system in enterprises worldwide. So, the major shift from 2012 and 2013 
has been the growth of Android in the enterprises. And uh, if Apple had 40% market share, the estimation now is a bit less than 30%. Most likely, it will shrink a bit, not that much. Uh, and to be uh, clear, that was number three in mobility, BlackBerry has lost its market. We see that it's losing even right now. And the prediction is not very favorable, while still IDC predicts 5% of the market to remain with BlackBerry for the future. I know that BlackBerry was never seriously pre present here in Estonia, but still there are some users of that name through their corporations. Uh, and then that remaining part, I believe Microsoft Windows Phone will manage into enterprises uh, back again in uh, some years. So now mobile security is at the moment maybe the most discussed uh, <coughs> topic when talking about enterprise mobility. Surely there are growing mobile security threats. The number of uh, viruses, other malicious applications, especially for Android, is growing. Well, Android is the mostly used operating system in the world right now, I guess. Uh, the users are not very well educated. The operating system is open source, so sometimes it's easier to hijack that, it's also the open operating system, open ecosystem compared to other vendors. So yeah, we see that even from 2012 to 2013, uh, the number of threats has grown significantly. Actually, last year, uh, there has been no such dramatic growth. Uh, but also since mobile devices are just another way to access corporate networks in general. So, this is the study by Virgin Media that more than 50% of top British companies had uh, security issues caused by access from mobile devices. And uh, why managing security is important? Uh, yeah, surely you could switch maybe from Android to another application, operation system, but even iOS, which, well, had that. Uh, I don't know how to say, uh, image of very secure operating system, yeah. Just recently an SSL bug has been discovered, which have, was actually present for one and a half years within iOS. So maybe there are more issues we don't know, but no one can be fully sure about their operating system like, well, Microsoft did really good job to improve Microsoft Windows, to improve the security, etc. But still, some problems might be disclosed. So that's why we are installing antiviruses. That's why we are uh, managing our desktop PCs. So exactly the same should be valid for the mobile devices if they are used for company use, especially since mobile devices are not staying on the desk. They are moving all around. And uh, another question with mobile devices and their movements is data leakage, for example. If I have important information on my mobile device, yeah. It's very simple. I, I, if I have access to the email, I can maybe download attachment. The question number one is, where does that the downloaded attachment stay? Somewhere on my device. What will happen to that secret, top confidential attachment if I lose my phone and someone finds that and connects to the computer or ruins the device? Another question is, if I'm not a very loyal employee, how, but I need access to that information. How an administrator, how a team manager can prevent me from leaking the information to the competitors. So there are different threats. Some of them are really new threats uh, in the IT world, well, new for a couple of years. And still, uh, there is the need for managing that. And uh, one more topic, one more challenge is actually choosing the right policy to procure the devices, to buy the devices, to give the devices to employees. So there are different flavors of that. Uh, the simplest one is personal use of the device is not allowed. You are using the device, you get the corporate device and use that just for corporate purposes. And actually, it was, uh, then, the decision makers might be IT or might be procurement. 
And just two weeks ago, I had a meeting with one of the top Lithuanian uh, government agencies. And they told, you know, we just got co completely new Samsung devices, Galaxy A's. That's the model which has been available actually two years ago. So, but since its procurement, uh, which is responsible for devices there, it's not IT, so procurement found very good, new and cheap devices. And uh, they brought about 100 units, almost to all the employees. So the question is, what to do with those devices? They cannot manage them because they are outdated. Uh, they are not supporting the enterprise management features, etc. So this is also the risk if the procurement decides what to buy without consulting with IT. Surely we can have an uh, informal bring your own device where the employee comes with his phone or employee can see what phone to buy and will use that. The risk here is that, again, IT is not managing what's happening here. So maybe the more positive scenarios are formal bring your own device when the IT says, okay, these are the key features you need for the phone. Security of this and that type, uh, data encryption, VPN, that and that. And the consumer can choose whatever he wants, maybe, or can choose device inside the price range, but device has to manage those requirements. Then he can, can get access to email, to internet, etc. And uh, corpor corporately owned, privately enabled, is maybe the most popular scenario here in the Baltics and in Europe in general, when the company gives corporate phone to the employee but allows to use that phone also for personal use. In that case, well, the user can choose sometimes the device, but from limited options. Procurement can buy the devices cheaper if they buy more, but IT also is uh, providing their considerations what the devices should be. So that was a short overview of the enterprise mobility trends and challenges. And now I'm going to talk a bit about Samsung solutions for enterprise mobility. Samsung started developing those solutions and providing them uh, in 2011 already. So now, three years after the start, we really have what to tell about. And uh, I will shortly just introduce what we mean with our mobile devices for B2B. Then Knox Container Solution, the most secure Android solution for the corporates at the moment. Uh, and really a few slides on a few other <coughs> solutions that you, yeah. And if you are really interested in those, we can discuss later on. <coughs> so first of all, how do we define the mobile devices? for business. Should they be fashionable, trendy? Maybe every company needs just flagship devices or waterproof devices or fast devices lovely. I li I'd like that and I'd like that. And I want that La Fleur edition of Samsung because it has nice pink roses. Uh, well, maybe that's not the right way to choose the devices for corporate use. Actually, within Samsung, we have another metric to define the B2B capability of mobile device. And there are three key features. The first one, the mobile device has to support on-device encryption of data. The second one, the mobile device has to support VPN. The third one, it has to support enhancement management policies. I will have a slide on that a bit later, but the idea is that if you will now go to the operator or to any mobile shop, if you will look at Samsung Galaxy or Note devices, meaning Android devices, 85 to 90 percent of Samsung models are fitting into those scenarios. So only the very cheapest or very, very old <laughs> Samsung devices you can buy are not supporting these features. So the the most cheapest are consumer-oriented, use-oriented devices. They are not intended for company use. But if you take Samsung device for 100, 170 euros, most likely it will support all these key features. 
And what are the extended man enhanced management policies? So in actually, in Android, we have already so-called management policies. So that mobile device management solutions like Citrix and Mobile, and there are many others, could control the device, like require the password to unlock the device, etc., etc. But if you will look at Android, well, initially in Android management API, they have the 28 policies. Nowadays, there are 35 policies. And when in 2011 Samsung started so called Safe Initiative, Secure Android for Enterprises, it started from growing the introducing so-called safe or enterprise SDK that is available to FDM vendors and more than 100 of them are using it today and it opens much more policies. So initial version has been about 60. Nowadays, well, with the Galaxy S4 you will get about 410 policies. It doesn't mean that every vendor is supporting everything. They can choose what to support. But for example, if you want to blacklist or whitelist the applications on the device, meaning to the administrator wants to define which applications the user can install or which are forbidden to be installed and must be installed automatically, then Samsung provides that capability. If you want a bit more flexibility with VPN setup, this is also something that Samsung can provide by its enhancement management policy. Depending on the device model, even with the new device, you may be not able to get all the 410 policies because device features will not support that. But uh, 60 are the very, very basic. And well, if I take, let's say, Discover 2, which was one of the cheaper still available phones, I will be in the range of 200 additional policies on top of Android standard. And actually, if you want to use that, well, these features are, as I said, in majority of Samsung phones. So, no, you are not paying for that. You might, be, might need to pay for mobile device management solution, yes. And if you are going to almost any mobile device management solution, you will see Android policies and either Samsung policies or safe policies, or now it will be called Knox policies to access those enhanced management capabilities. Then another solution, the new one which has been introduced last year is Samsung Knox. Samsung has developed Knox to address the needs of using the same phone in corporate environment and private life. So a team manager is expected to request a high security of the data on the device and to control the, and manage mobile device. But if I am employee, I want to have my personal information on the device. Maybe that's even my personal device. And I want to protect my privacy. I don't want the administrator to read my personal emails in my Gmail account, if, even if the company is using corporate Gmail. So Samsung Knox is the solution which is actually implementing, well, besides to your personal or standard uh, operating system environment, you get so-called Knox container, which can be understood as a virtual environment, secure environment managed by corporate IT administrator via mobile device management, which is not accessible directly from the personal environment. So if you store the document here, it cannot be retrieved from personal environment. You cannot take screenshot of Knox container. You cannot copy the data out of the Knox container. It can be sent only via the methods approved by the administrator, maybe only via email. Can you send the information from Knox container to outside? And uh, then the administrator can set up different policies for the container. For example, he can set up VPN just for the container. Or even inside the container, you can set up per application VPN tunnels. And you don't touch the personal part then. You can set firewalls for the container. You can limit the browsing to some particular sites, maybe, within the container. You can manage the applications there but you don't touch the private environment. Actually, I'm checking the time, so 
If I still will manage, I will show live demo of Nox here. If not, then please welcome to our stand. I will be there full day. I have live demo devices with Nox, so we can walk through that. And just explaining a bit what is inside Nox. So Nox is available not on all, but on, at the moment on some, more than 10 different Samsung Android devices. And we are enhancing the Android stack inside the device. First of all, we are using the CPU feature called Trust Zone, the feature designed by ARM, so by the company which is making reference designs for the CPUs for majority of mobile phones. And that's the secure vault inside the CPU. So one CPU core is allocated for secure data processing. And at the moment, security experts believe that this is the most secure way to perform some computations like accessing PTI certificates or uh, encryption keys. Samsung is, to my best knowledge, the first Android vendor and maybe the first vendor on the market at all. We don't know exactly about that, the, the vendors in some cases, which is utilizing the Trust Zone feature. Then we have implemented enhanced security platform. There is a trusted boot sequence implemented, which is uh, intended to detect device routing, jailbreaking, once the device is loaded. And after that, once the device is running, we have also measurement architecture, <coughs> which will allow to detect the hijacking the device while it's running. And what will happen to the device if I will root that? That's a common question. It will run. You can use it as a personal device. But it will get a mark, a so-called NOC security bit burnt out, meaning that you will not be able to access enterprise features or some of enterprise features on that device. It's not considered secure anymore. And then on top of those enhancements to bootloader and kernel, we have security enhancements for Android. So Samsung has brought features from security enhanced Linux, which is now mainstream distribution into Android. We have <coughs> virtual domains, so the root user can access his data but cannot access other virtual domains. And we have mandatory access controls for the applications. So that the applications cannot access different domains and the applications perform, are performing only the operations they are allowed to do. On top of that, we have so-called NOS Android framework. So here we have on-device encryption, here we have VPN, here we have MDM capabilities. And this is something that you get with, uh, for example, Galaxy S4 phone, Galaxy S4 mini phone, Galaxy Note device right now. This is the part of standard device. So you cannot disable trusted boot, for example, anymore. And you cannot uh, disable security enhancements for Android anymore. That's why sometimes you might get a message that security policies need updated. Do you accept the download of those or not? And then on top of that, we have the application not container, which is the thing I mentioned. This is the total separation of <coughs> applications and data. With Nox container, you have actual best-in-class security at the moment. We have uh, <coughs> Samsung Knox on Galaxy S4 and some other devices has received uh, US Department of Defense STIG, STAG, so the certification for use with confidential data. We have received U United Kingdom government approval for public use. And just in February, uh, Samsung has received the common criteria certification for mobile devices. So that's the new set of uh, certificate, certificates for the uh, secure mobile devices. Common criteria means that uh, 17 NATO countries and, 20, uh, and plus five other countries are supporting that, are recognizing that certificate. Recognition procedure is still ongoing, but it should be completed in all 22 countries by the end of this month. And even in the Baltics, I have seen that some, well, Lithuanian foreign ministry, for example, is requesting mobile devices with which you have that, that, or common criteria certification. Even Lithuania is not part of common criteria group, but it's actually uh, agreeing to that it's the right certification and we can look at that if you want secure devices. 
And when we are talking about Knox, we are talking, well, Samsung's part is, first of all, this. We are enhancing the device. We can provide a Knox solution, container solution. And then we are working with the partners to enable that. So you will need some device management capability to manage the container. There are more than, on this presentation, partners supporting that, including Cisco, SAP, oh, sorry, uh, Citrix, SAP, uh, Sorti, Mobile Iron, and the others. Sure, inside Knox container, you can have your own corporate applications deployed, and so on. And uh, just talking about the range of devices you can use for NOC, it's available on our smartphones, on no devices and tablets. Uh, well, Galaxy S4, S4 Mini, Galaxy Mega, definitely S5, which is coming next week. And other new devices are and will be supporting NOX. Uh, no devices, no 3, no 3 Lite. Uh, Note tablets, Pro Edition tablets, and it's likely that Tab 4, which will be coming in a couple of months, will might be supporting Knox. So I still have three minutes to go, and I have three slides, I believe. Very shortly about other solutions for the companies. And uh, you always can ask your operator or the partner you are talking about mobile devices, mobility solutions to offer also that services. One thing is mobile care pack. That's a warranty product for our customers, or two warranty products. The first one is extended warranty. Standard warranty for Samsung devices in Europe is two years. For mobile phones, it's enough, because usually the customers tend to change the phone after two years. For tablets, the usage term is quite often longer. So in principle, for example, for your tablets, you can request a third year warranty. Manufacturer's warranty, guaranteed by Samsung. Another product is accidental damage from handling, meaning that we can extend the warranty to cover display damage, to cover uh, Power uh, to cover uh, device breaks through falling, through water, uh, accidents due to power issues, etc. So sometimes you can get insurance for that, but you can get also manufacturer's warranty for that. Another topic, and this is something we are working here in the Baltics uh, also very actively. It's, we are trying to enable our partner ecosystem. We have a dedicated partner program for software and mobile development companies who are developing B2B solutions. So yeah, there are uh, Samsung programs for game developers, but I'm working with businesses. So we are talking about business application development. We are supporting those partners. So we are providing them access to our R&D to raise the questions about uh, different issues with mobile devices. We are providing some exclusive APIs for them to access and to use. And one of the solutions that we will be provided will be called Nox, Samsung Knox customization. Mm -hmm. And in principle, it's ability to have a richer configuration and control of the device. Uh, for example, to run the device in kiosk mode without even any management console to limit uh, the functionality that the employee is getting. If you want uh, the employee just to use some logistics solution on his tablet, seven inch tablet, you don't want him to access the internet, you don't want him to use email, so this will be one feature that will be available via our software partners because it requires using some particular APIs to disable those functions. And the totally new thing, uh, which should be available also this Friday on the 11th of April, is Samsung EMM. EMM stands for Enterprise Mobility Management. And that will be Samsung's cloud-based uh, mobile device management solution. There's optional integration with Active Directory if you need, allowing you to manage 
Samsung's Android devices very well because we have enhanced management policies, but you will be able to manage any Android device and you will be able to manage either Apple devices as well using that solution. It will allow administrator to use cloud-based console to manage the applications, the users, the devices. It will be easy to use. It, so in principle, I would say this solution is, first of all, for small and medium businesses. But majority of businesses here in the Baltics, compared to US, are still small and medium businesses. So if you are OK with using the cloud-based solution, maybe that would be also an option for you. And ITEA, as our partner, will be eligible to sell both Knox licenses and TMM licenses. And I believe we will be able also to set up demo, etc. So that is all. And I would like to welcome you also to Samsung stand during the lunch break or after that or during the coffee breaks. And as I said, we have we can show you Knox and we really can discuss more the solutions you need and how we could help you with those solutions. And if you want to get Samsung sticker and want to have a chance to win Galaxy S4, yes, please. Thank you.